Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about voltage drop. I had a project recently where instead of putting a local UPS inside of this, you know, shed, um, they asked us to run a circuit from the building's central UPS all the way out to the shed. And that was a huge distance. So there was a significant voltage drop and we had to calculate for that. So no, like normally I would pull up a spreadsheet like this and this spreadsheet, you know, I would punch in the load. So I would say, you know, I'm going to pull 80% of the circuit. So 16 amps. And then my distance would, would was, was like 200 feet or something. And then with my voltage at 120 volts, I select my phase, my copper type, my ambient temperature, and then over here, I, you know, I start playing with my numbers and it turns out I need, I needed a number six to be able to keep under my, my 3% voltage drop. So if you don't know, a number six gauge wire is huge for a receptacle. Like I've never had to specify that before, but because they were so adamant about not putting a UPS out there that I had to run the circuit, this is what they ended up doing. Granted, they have to step down the wire when they get to the receptacle, like a, a regular 20 amp receptacle cannot accept a number six wire. I think the highest I've ever seen one plug in was like maybe a number 10. But besides the point, um, I normally have to do this calculation by hand and using, you know, a spreadsheet, it's fine and all, but I'm not going to do this for every single circuit in Revit. It's going to be crazy, right? So Revit apparently has a feature that'll help you calculate voltage drop by measuring the distance within the model. And then if you put in the correct load on your you know, receptacle, your connector, it'll figure out that voltage drop for you and it should size up your wire. Um, it works okay, but there are cases where I don't want to put 80% breaker capacity on my receptacle. So for instance, um, when we're putting in general receptacles or receptacles for maintenance on the roof for HVAC equipment, um, that has to be within 25 feet of any serv serviceable equipment. And sometimes the closest panel is like 100, maybe 200 feet away. So by the time you run that circuit over there, you're going to have significant voltage drop if you plug in some heavy load. But if we're putting a general receptacle up there, they get entered in as 180 VA. And um, that won't trigger Revit's voltage drop calculation to upsize the wire. So we had an instance where the receptacles up there, they go to plug in a big a power, an electric pressure washer, and the pressure washer just chokes because there's not enough voltage up there. Let me show you um, what my favorite tool has been ever since ElectroBIM has released their voltage drop plug-in part of their software. It's really cool. There's a lot of new features in there. And one of my favorite is to allow the calculations to automatically use 80% of the breaker capacity. It's really neat. So let me show you how that works. Before we dive in, I just want to say that this spreadsheet I use um, does a pretty decent job at calculating voltage drop manually. So if you know your amperage that you're going to pull plus your length, your phase, yada, yada, you can punch it in up here and it'll do the math and spit out a uh, voltage drop percentage. So typically I try to aim for 2% on the feeder, 3% on the branch circuiting, total 5%. Um, you can get more complicated, but for my purpose, I just calculate for 3% on here. And then I do a separate calc for 2% for the feeders. But anyways, you can grab a copy of this spreadsheet. If you want, I'll put a link in the description. It'll probably be like a Google drive download. Um, essentially just work on this tab. The next tab is the list. So this is what everything references. If you need to change the temp correction or the, the wire size or your resistivity, whatever, you can change it in here if you want to, that's on you. Um, and then just a couple assumptions. I think this is just what I built off of. And if you want to change that, you're going to have to rejigger the formula. But anyways, that's not the highlight of the show here. The main fun bit here is the Revit model. So I just drew up a very quick, you know, three receptacle plus the panel to show you how Revit handles voltage drop and how ElectroBIM, you know, mixes in pretty well with that. So what I have here is um, a 120 208 uh, panel with a receptacle at 10 feet, um, 75 and 150. And notice that I also have these offset a little bit too. So 
um, just to let you know that Revit does account for the distance and it does this pretty accurately. So if you were to open up a 3D view, which is pretty simple, I just click this and then I hit the section box. So you can see how the, the panels in the wall, the uh, receptacles in the wall, and I think I, eh, it looks a little off, but it's in the wall. And if you were to click on the receptacle and click electrical circuit and hit edit path, so once you hit edit path, you can see that it does try to figure out um, what the electrician is likely going to do in the field. So you see how it takes the worst case scenario. If it's going up into the ceiling space, going over and coming down the wall, it assumes that the circuit's going to come from the bottom of the panel. So that's worst case scenario. So it goes up, over, and down. Um, you can tweak this if you want it to. So like if you hit all devices, I think it goes down. You can do, You can go you know, all out and do custom and, you know, intentionally pull all this circuit, whichever way, you know, that might actually travel. Um, you can see, you can get pretty crazy with it, but I don't do any of that. I just leave it at furthest device. And then if you like, I, you can put this at zero, if you know the circuit's going to go down and over. Um, but I generally assume up and over. So I leave it at that furthest device, 15 foot offset, Perfect. And it'll see a total length of 34 feet, six inch and three quarter. <laughs> it's very, it's very precise apparently. So that's, um, that's usually done automatically when you circuit anything. So there's a, there's a conductor length that it accounts for. Now, another thing to check is if you go under manage under your electrical settings, um, you just want to make sure that your voltage drop um, actually make sure that your voltage definition is set. Um, I think under wire, here it is. So wiring, there's the max voltage drop sizing parameter. So here it says the branch circuit sizing should not have more than 3% voltage drop and the feeder circuit sizing should max out at 2%. Um, if you want to flip these, feel free to change it in here. I think the NEC just states 5% overall. Um, Last I heard, somebody said that it, they don't really tell us exactly which one is 3%, which one is 2%, but it shouldn't exceed 5%, I think. Um, but yeah, so you set that up in here, and then once you hit OK, uh, there we go, it starts to do this voltage drop calculation um, for everything that you have circuit. So if we were to go back here to the floor plan, this open up this schedule, which is apparently DP1. What? That makes no sense. Uh, let me change that. Rename RP1. Okay, that tab was throwing me off. Anyways, RP1. <laughs> so you got circuit one over here. You can see that it's a 20 amp circuit, single pole, 180 VA. And Revit thinks everything is fine at number 12. That's because these were circuit it as general receptacle and that's typically what they come in at 180 VA um, we didn't really have an equipment in mind but because you know my one circuit was a rooftop equipment maintenance circuit so like within 25 feet of um, maintainable equipment on the roof you have to have a general receptacle so we put in a general receptacle and it landed with 180 VA so Revit does this just fine. It's like, hey, you know, it's fine. You can use a number 12. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but in reality, if somebody plugs in, let's say the full, you know, 16 amps of load, which will be 1920 VA. So if we hit that number, you can see that the schedule pops over to a, um, a number six. So obviously that has an impact on the size of wire that you need and the distance is close to 200 feet. So ideally, I wouldn't even run it that far. I would try to pick a closer panel. Um, but if you had to do it, you would actually need a number six. So this could e this could easily get missed. If you tell someone to put in a general receptacle, they're probably just going to stick 180 VA on there and call it a day. Um, so that has other implications, depending on how you want to load your panel schedule out, how you want to you know, do your calcs and everything. But that's a different story. I'm not going to harp on that right now. Right now, I just want to focus on voltage drop. So voltage drop wise, you could do it this way if you're diligent or you don't want to show full load on all your dedicated circuits. Um, Electrobim actually has a cool feature that lets you 
calculate the wire size for 80% load, but not necessarily force you to put 80% loading into your schedule. So let me show you how ElectroBIMS software helps. So the customization, if you go under the um, ElectroBIMS tab and you go to customize, under your project options, there's a couple things that you can tweak here, which is really cool. All right, so you might've seen this before in a previous video, but there's a new section down here um, for voltage drop. And same thing here, you got your drop limit for feeders, branch circuit, and total. So I have it set for two for feeders, three for circuits, and five total. And then um, you can upsize feeders, yes. Uh, there's a limit here, maximum feeder upsize multiplier. Now this is really cool because sometimes what Revit will do will just keep upsizing until your percentage is met. So like uh, we actually had a problem where a receptacle was accidentally circuited to the wrong building and then Revit decided to upsize the wire. And it was like, hey, use a one aught wire to run this circuit X amount of feet to the other building. And, you know, no one really caught that. It didn't like bring up an error or anything. Um, what this will do is that it'll limit the amount that'll be upsized because after a certain ups amount of upsizing, um, there's something wrong with the design. Like you shouldn't be running a one aught for a receptacle circuit at all. Like you're, you're coming from the wrong panel. So if you limit this, what's cool is that I'll show you in a second voltage drop schedule will you know, exceed that in the percentage. And then you'll see like something's, you know, beyond 3%, you have a problem. And then that'll bring it to your attention to fix that design. That should be coming from a different panel. It shouldn't be coming from this one going 500 feet that way. All right. So that's what that, you know, parameter does. Um, you can reset at transformers cause you can, you know, adjust the taps to get your voltage back. Yeah. And then down here, these, these are the two, um, features that I really love. You can, calculate the voltage drop based on 80% of panel capacity. And then here's the other one. Branch circuits um, can be calculated at 80% of breaker capacity. So I turn those two on to yes. And what it'll do is put the 80% of the breaker or panel capacity into the voltage calc and run the calculations to get your proper wire size. So let's see what that does. So back here, I have, I haven't changed anything. The receptacles are still where they are, but the, um, the loads are still at 180. Now, if I were to go over here to calculate the whole project, run the calculation. Okay. So then once it, um, we don't have the schedule. So once the calculation runs, you'll have to go back up here to electro BIM design under schedule and open up voltage drop review. So this is the schedule that shows you everything that has been upsized. Um, you'll see circuit one's not on here. I think cause it gets filtered out because it was not upsized. So yeah, the um, circuit voltage drop upsize equals to yes. So if you hit, if you want everything to be shown, just take out this filter, hit okay. And you can see here circuit number one. So one was originally a 12 and then it stayed a 12. So that's why this was taken out. But you can see circuit number two, it was, um, it was at 5.81% drop if we use the number 12. It was upsized to a number eight that gives us 2.27. And then same thing for the last one. It went from a number 12 to a number six to keep us under that 3%. Would have been a 10% voltage drop had we left it like that. So that's pretty cool, right? So I don't have to put in an exact load at the time or ever, really. Um, you can just run all your calculations based on 80% of your upstream, you know, feeder size. And that should give you a pretty good, robust design so that whatever they plug in later on down, down the road, on the roof, whether it be a pressure washer or a big fan or a motor, whatever, once they plug that in, it's just going to work. You can see here the panel schedule I have kind of clobber together, um, has the Revit wire size as Revit would have done it. And it has the electro beam wire size with the 80% calculation box checked. And honestly, I probably would keep the electro beam wire size. Um, the length is here just to prove my point saying that, you know, it's a significant distance, which would justify your larger branch circuiting. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice to have it. I know some firms put them in, some firms don't, but it's up to you. But the point is, um, Revit has a built-in voltage drop 
calculator, it works pretty well. Um, but there are cases where I see myself using the electro BIM stuff more just because I have some, um, some freedom to be able to just put a checkbox in there and make sure that it's good to go if the receptacle gets used for something heavier in the future or if the panel gets loaded up in the future, I'll just know that those feeder sizes are sized correctly. All right, so that's how I've been using uh, Revit you know, voltage drop. Electrobim does a really good job just kind of shoring up some of those weaknesses. And um, you know, among many of its other useful features, this is just another thing that helps you keep track of all those mundane little things within your project to make sure that you don't get that RFI saying, are you sure you wanna run this wire for this? Cause we don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> so yeah, they were right. I shouldn't have ran that 200 feet. All right, that's it for today. Uh, don't forget, there is a link down below for the spreadsheet. Um, you can also find links for the ElectroBin plugin if you're interested, it's really useful. And uh, Discord, Patreon, all the good stuff. Just check out the video descriptions. There's plenty of tools for you guys. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, like the video, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.